Welcome to Buy the Books, the podcast helping business owners navigate the complex world of business, tax, and bookkeeping. Now, to the owner and president of Secline, Lindsay Klein. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This is Lindsay Klein with Secline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time and your host of Buy the Books. I'm here today with Aaron Greger, who is the co-founder of Innovation Media Enterprises, a podcast production and growth company. Yes. Yeah? It's a mouthful. It is. (laughs) I'm so glad to have you on today. Yeah, I'm obviously, for many reasons, excited to have you here. So very cool. And thank you for letting me be on today. So anyway, Anyone that's watching the video is going to see that the aesthetic of this podcast has drastically changed. <laughs> drastically. And we have multiple cameras coming from multiple angles now. Yes. I mean, we look like we're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all thanks to Aaron. Yes. So, um, One thing that whenever I had originally started my podcast, I started with Free Donation Productions. And um, in the very beginning, Mark told me, he said, we don't do video. And I really wanted the video for YouTube. And he was like, I'm willing to try it. Just please don't hold me to anything. If anything happens, just know that's not what I do. So I knew that going into it. But he was a friend at that point the only person I knew that did it. I was so green to it. And I'm like, I just want to jump in. Let's just get started. I know it's going to be horrible at first because I've never done it before. And I'm sure you've seen some horrible podcasts, Aaron, over the years. That was me. Well, no, but don't be. I mean, I, but you started. I think that's I where people have to, they get so swept up that they need the massive studio and this customized couch and feel. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just start and move as you grow, right? Like, you I. It, but you started, so that's I what you, I started, yes. and that was exactly my mindset. It was like, I know I, I am not gonna be the best. I know it's not gonna be everything that I envision and dream, right? But at least if I start practicing, I'll, I'll get there eventually. So yes. that was the idea. So we all jumped in together. They jumped into the video, even though they had never done it before. And, um, so now that we've gotten to a point where it's like, all right, let's start trying to actually get some sponsorships. Let's take this next level. Right as I decided to do that, we had a debacle with the video. <laughs> and Aaron, even you've been trying to help out with that debacle <laughs> where uh, for some reason our video files got corrupted. It was a debacle. So Mark was totally honest with me, like, listen, if you want to take this next level and really get it professional, like you need to find a company that can really do the video well for you. And like, he was so sweet about it. So that's why we have brought Aaron on the scene who has a lot of experience with the video and the audio, because this is what you do all day, every day, right? Yeah. Well, and what's interesting for us is that when we started this, so the studio we're sitting in right now is about three years old. It's smaller than what we'd like. Originally, it was audio. It was going to be audio only. That's what we were. It was an audio oh. shop. COVID changed everything, everything because people were like, you had Jimmy Fallon doing essentially the the Tonight Show on From a Zoom like call. You know what I mean? <laughs> so all of a sudden, people were like, "Wait a minute, I I, I could get on yeah. Zoom, but it's okay." Yeah. Or how do you just fancy up that call a little bit? And it went from we completely switched from. 90% audio, 10% video, and did a complete 180 on that. And we had to learn to do video real quick. And, mm. you know, we talked about this the other the other day where it was like, I mean, we've had our growing pains too, where it was like, and luckily I have great people who work for me who are way smarter than me. Because <laughs> it was like, I mean, we were just, but it, it was, we had to change the game because it really, the podcast, and, and it is still, there's still a very audio, you know, audio only rich type of thing, but a lot of people really want video now and it's that it doesn't have to be super produced i mean and and overly fancy but they like that second perspective of outside of just the audio yes and i agree and a lot of times i'm watching i'm not going to find a podcast i'm just watching the video that is posted on social media somewhere and i'm sure that's the same for some of our viewers and listeners yes so I understand that. And yeah. it's nice to see the face of the person that's talking. Yes. So it does offer some richness that you wouldn't otherwise have. 
Yes. So I get that. So. Yeah. And if you look at the no, like, you know, obviously people buy when they know, like, and trust you. Yes. And so it's always, I always give that example. If I read, if I wrote you a letter, you probably could get a good feel of who I am, mm-hmm. but you'd insert your own, like, you could take thank you as thank you. Or right. Thank, you know, you could take right. it 20 different ways. Right. Audio eliminates that a little bit because you can hear my voice you can get to know me and then video when I see you talking and interacting and I feel like I know you a lot more than just the audio perspective so it really helps build that if you're comfortable on video there are a lot of people who aren't who aren't comfortable on video so if that's if you're comfortable with video my suggestion would definitely be to up level into that and just and Mm. even if it is like listen I know I own this and obviously I would love for everybody to come and you know record with us but even if you start in your living room with a nice backdrop, start there. Yeah. Like, don't overthink it. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, it, practice makes perfect. A hundred percent. And the people that I think just get in there and do it more and more and more, you're going to get more comfortable. Uh, yes. It's just a natural result of doing it over and over and over. Exactly. Eventually, you don't even think about it. Exactly. It's just a conversation. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I do have the people, the guests that come in super prepared, (laughs) super prepared. And then I get nervous because I'm going, oh boy, because I know they are over prepared, too many notes. They're probably going to spend half the time looking at the notes and trying to make sure that they get every bullet point. So I try to tell guests when I'm prepping them, don't over prepare, like do not overthink this. You know your stuff. Exactly. You know, like we don't need it to be bullet points and powerpoints like that's not what this is about it's a conversation exactly so yeah yeah Yeah. and I think like my husband's he's so he's a chiropractor so he's he gets in his own head of like well what if I say the wrong stat or what if Uh, I say the wrong thing and somebody randomly it's like you can always you can always say you know what I was wrong or mm -hmm. I miss you know you can always do a recording at the beginning hey there's a piece or edit it out whatever like there's always a chance to fix it and not everybody speaks correctly right. 100% of the time. If you say, you know what, I said this, th- let me get the stat right, I misquoted it, people will completely yeah. understand that. Like, it yes. doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I, honestly, I think the more perfect it is, the less relatable it is. Like, I agree. Just just be yourself. And I mean, I've had done live shows or podcasts where I th- I'm pretty sure I've made up words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if that's a word, but I kind of know the meaning of it. We're going to go with it. And I mean, if somebody has a problem with that, then we're pro- I mean, we're probably not going to be the best fit because I may make up a word when we're on a client call or something. You know what I mean? So it's like you can't, you have to be OK with those things. And I mean, I have a whole new dictionary, so it's totally cool. We're making this authentic. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Well, this is a testament to how good your video quality is if you can see my Invisalign braces that uh-huh. I just got in. This is the first recording with the men. And I don't even know if I, I probably even sound different, but can you see them from where you're sitting? I can, I, I see them because I know you have them in. Okay. And you can just see like, t- I mean, you can see a little bit of the bump on your teeth, but it's not yeah. noticeable. At I all. hate them. Do you hate with them? With a passion. And I have to wear them for two years. But two at the, years, yeah. Wow. But at the end of two years, I will have a nice, straight, smile that's the goal that's why I'm going through this but I was a little nervous about it because I do so much networking and of course I do this where I'm on video and all of this so I was worried about how they were going to look because it's one of those things where it's okay do I come out and just like at every meeting like hey excuse the braces like just acknowledge it or do I make them like distracted the whole time going is there something on her teeth well, no, but I mean, if you had brace, if you had regular braces, though, you would never. It just well, like, yeah, because it it's obvious. Yeah, but I feel like this is subtle enough to where it's like you're not sure if there's something on my yeah. teeth, or it's like distracting. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so. and I would never. I don't. I think you're overthinking it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's hope I so. I don't hear anything. Okay, and that was another thing I was worried about. Like, am I going to sound like I have a lisp or something because I've got these things yeah. in my teeth? But yeah. anyway, hey, they're going to be straight. We're, we're doing it authentic, though. I'm leaving them in. So yeah. here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Braces and all. Exactly. So for the average small business mm-hmm. owner, which is who I talk to on this podcast. Yes. Why would they want a podcast or even be thinking about a podcast? Why should they care? Well, OK, so to the point of there's several factors. Like I said, no like and trust people 
will do business with who they know, like, and trust. And the faster you can bridge that gap, it's really important. And I know you and I talked about this before with with podcasting. And this is where, so I started my very first business like 15 years ago. And now, I was, found, it, was it a production? No, it was, no? Pr- it was totally opposite. It was pet sitting. Really? We built this, yes. We built this go, massive, girl. I was buying out competitors. Like I had, wow. massive, it was like a big, it was Look a big you, company. Look at you, entrepreneur. But, but what I discovered was majority, I would write, I wrote a blog. So this was back in the day and I would just write about, oh, we got to visit so-and-so and I lo- or we'd, we rescue. So I would tell those stories. Uh-huh. That's what it would not necessarily draw like people would be like, I found your blog, therefore I wanted to hire you, but I looked at three other websites and I read your blog ah. and I wanted you. So that's what so closed the deal all the time. So, and I know you and I talked about that too. Like a lot of people will come to your website yes. and they see that podcast and right. that closes the deal. Yes. So it people get to, if you have that versus your competitors, you got a yeah. huge advantage. The other side is you need content, like whether it's, I, you know, I always do an upside down pyramid video to pot, to an audio to written. You need some sort of content. And even if it's just written, that's OK. But how can you drive people to your website? How can they get to know you outside of an about me page? Like, how can I read your stuff or hear you and be like, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about mm-hmm. or they answered. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know that listen to someone's podcast and they're like, I have learned so much from your podcast that when it came time to hiring you, I had to hire you. Like you've done so much for me for free at this point. That's amazing. I I need to give you money. I mean, it's just that, like I joke, one of our clients here, they are CPAs for um, dentists. Like it's very specific. Oh. It's I tease them. I say this with a loving heart. Like, it's dry. Your CPA is anywhere for dentists, right? Like, it's not. That's exactly what I'm trying not to do, Erin. <laughs> exactly. This is an accounting podcast, by and large. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like, but I learned so much from that podcast. It's hilarious because I'll be like my, like, my husband will ask me something about, like, when PPP was happening and all this. I'm like, did you know? And I'll give them all the instructions. <laughs> like, it was totally like I slept at a Holiday Inn, but I just happened to edit their podcast or was in for the recording or something. But it, I mean, it's just. It's that, and I can guarantee you, if I had a dentist I talked to, I would. I need mean, you have those people, so yeah. it just helps to build that and credibility. Yeah, credibility. It's going to get you in front of people easier. The other thing is, I think a lot of people miss out on is, and I'm sure you've noticed this too. If I were to call somebody, and be like, "Hey, can I pick your brain?" or you don't know me, but I want to, you know, I, you should do business with me. They'd be like, take a hike, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe you can get that to happen. If you call and say, hey, I have a podcast. Yes. I love what you are about and love what you have to say. Could you come in or can I come to your play or whatever? Can we get on a call and record a podcast? You are going to get a yes, 10, you know, times 10, right? Yeah. So, and people miss that. And a lot of times I was just talking to somebody the other day. He's like, you know, I'll, I'll get in the busy CEOs. And I'm like, I'm so busy. I, I can't, you know, I can, I can fit you in for 30 minutes. And he brings his stuff there. He gets in for those 30 minutes and they love the experience so much. They're like, come on, let me take you around the building or let me take, you know, it just, it changes everything mm. from a, what do you want from me to, wow, we have a great rapport. Let's extend this relationship. So that's a huge piece. Too. Yes. I agree with that. And I have had, I I haven't yet gotten the conversation where someone said, I found you because of the podcast. I think I got to be a little bit probably bigger than where I'm at right now for that. But what I have gotten is people that find me or Mm -hmm. know about me somehow, usually a referral. And then when they're looking into me, looking at my website or looking at social media, and they're then starting to watch the videos or listen to the podcast then it's starting to build, as you said, no like and trust, yeah. which is exactly what, what my objective was in starting this to begin with. Because bookkeeping, people are handing us their bank information, yeah. their tax returns. Like we have a lot of sensitive information and they want to know that they can trust us. Exactly. And so that's a huge deal. And I knew that. So my objective was how can I bridge that gap between me being a complete stranger to them to them actually knowing who I am and what I'm about. And this was to me the answer to bridging that or at least part of the answer to bridging that. So to me, that has worked. And I have actually had 
uh, one client in particular told me they started listening to the podcast and it was specifically because during one of my conversations with them um they got re- they got introduced to me through a CPA that recommended me and in the conversation the conference call with all of us the prospective client mentioned well i think all of you guys are pretty much the same <laughs> And and so I just mentioned to them, I said, I have actually a podcast episode about how to choose a tax preparer. I said, I'm not trying to yeah. advertise my podcast yeah. here, but I recommend you go listen to that because it's perfect. you will learn the questions to ask mm-hmm. and the things to look for and the red flags that you might see because we're not all created no. equal. <laughs> no. No. So it was interesting because they took my advice and they went and listened to it and then they just kept listening. And so they told me specifically after they signed on with me, they said it was your podcast. Like we could tell you were keeping up with topics that were relevant in, in the accounting world. You know, you were yeah. personable. So that was what did it for them and hopefully convinced them that no not everyone is created equal <laughs> exactly oh it's so what i i feel like with like cpa work and both it's like it's a very vulnerable thing too because it's sure. almost like you're standing naked in front of somebody and being yeah. like here's all our finances here's yes. what we did you know what i mean and it's, it is it's a very like you do need to build that trust factor and feel like somebody's not going to you know I don't know if it's a woman thing, but are we, you know, if men worry about being judged in their business or whatever, yeah. but it is very like, here you go. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I do get some of that sometimes when the client's like, don't judge me. Here's what we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, honey, I am no one to judge. Trust exactly. me. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've seen it all at this point. Yeah. Yes. And we have. Yeah. I mean, it, there is something to be said about that. Um, in fact, my other my friend the other day was talking about how nervous she is to get wax. She's like, I don't want to be like <laughs> naked in front of somebody. And my other friend was like, girl, they see that stuff every, every day, day, all day. Exactly. Like they're not sitting there gawking at you. They've seen it all. And it's kind of the same thing. Like it at is. this point, I have seen books in complete shambles. I have seen the worst messes possible. It's... It's almost, I I compare it to like just clinical. Like I get that term now when doctors use it. It's like, it's it's just, here's what we need to do to get where you need to be. I mean, it's not like I'm looking at that going, (gasps) yeah, I can't believe it. (laughs) I need to call my friend and talk about this with them because she's going to care a lot. (laughs) Exactly. So yeah, I I think we have seen it all. We've fixed it all. We've, you know, it's not a big deal. It's just, all right, here's what we need to do to get from A to B. Yeah. And there we go. You know? Exactly. So what do you think else is important for a small business owner to know about building content, doing podcasting, yeah. anything else you think is important? You know, a lot of people worry about, I think one of the biggest, so I'll tell you, the biggest things I see of people that come in here uh, is the first question, who am I? Who am I to do this? Who am I? Or somebody's already done a podcast about it. Somebody's already done this. Why should I? And, I, and here's what I'll say. I think at this point where, you know, this is 2022 as we record this, I think we can all agree that we probably have enough weight loss information out there, right? Yeah, like that's true. Less calories, work out. Yeah. <laughs> Should be that simple. <laughs> Yet, every day, there's more people that come out on the topic. They share their story. They share their perspective. They share their side. And so we haven't heard it in your voice yet. So maybe mm. you have a way of explaining it that just clicks for somebody. Or maybe you answer that one specific, you know, way per- problem somebody's having. So stop thinking you should be doing this just because maybe every competitor you have has one put a different spin on it just don't sit back and not have or you know not put out content i should say it doesn't have to be a podcast but whatever it is yeah go out there and do it so i think that's really important the other side is you know go for a long haul i think a lot of people come in they you know they hear joe rogan got the spotify deal mm-hmm. right and they're like oh my gosh joe rogan has like ever it's just i use him because everybody talks about him but don't expect that mm. really align with a what your business you know we work mostly what, with businesses Aaron, i was waiting for spotify <laughs> to call me next week, next week. <laughs> <laughs> just give it one more week but it's like align it with your business like really understand the measurements for some people 
you may just need one client a year to completely pay for that time, you yeah. know, or to close five extra clients. If you know that podcast does that, really understand those measurements, but also go in for the long haul. I really, um, I don't want you to like live and breathe by this number, but 30 is where I see a lot of tipping points happen. And 30 is almost a year in of recording. If you're going week by week by week, some people so do 30 every, episodes, 30 episodes. Okay. Some people do every other week that's approaching, you know, your, your year and a half or whatever. So it can be daunting where you're like, is anybody listening? Is anybody doing this? But keep at it. People are maybe, they're watching you, they're seeing it, they're paying attention. And just start where you're comfortable. If you just wanna do audio and that that is completely fine, just start there. If you wanna build into video, then build into video. If you never wanna do video, that's okay. But just start somewhere mm. at, at where your comfort level is and, and move into that. And I just, get out of your head. I just can't express that enough because yeah. I've had just people in here who are brilliant at what they do, just brilliant. And that's, well, I don't know who I am to do a podcast. What if I say something mm -hmm. wrong? What if I do the wrong, you know, get out of that. It's just so important because if, if all your competitors are asking themselves that and you're the one who actually goes out and does it, just again, think of yeah, how far exactly. ahead you are. That's right. So what is the craziest podcast topic you've ever seen? <sighs> Oh, wow. Um, that's a really interesting question. Because there's got to be some off there's, the wall ones, I mean, right? There's like so niched ones. Like, I mean, just, I know this isn't like off the wall, but I mean, there is a podcast about everything, like knitting groups. I mean, just, and it, it's like, I mean, there's everything. Like, and there's just dry. I mean, there's, when you, there is a podcast for everybody out there. Like, there are, I always look at the, I'm not a technical person, right? So, like the user groups for software. I mean, they have their own oh, podcast wow. on how to get better at using the software. I mean, it's definitely not gonna be, and that's another thing. Not all podcasts are gonna be for a mass audience. Yeah. Know your audience. And maybe um, we had one that we did and it was actually brilliant. It was about trucking. It was very specific. Hmm. He was a, he sold um, insurance to trucking companies. Interesting. So he was talking about what's going on with the truck. I mean, again, not A, exciting, B, not a massive where you're like, I'm gonna put this out and the world is just gonna eat this out. Yeah. <laughs> but for his audience, they were like, A, you're, you're doing something nobody else is doing, but B, um, he would bring in these people and they, it was just this connection point, this networking point for him. Hmm. So, uh, just you can do anything to connect with an audience. I mean, if I looked up in the in the podcasting groups I'm in, I could name some crazy ones. I, just, <laughs> I mean, it's just like what they it just what everybody has interest in. They do. I mean, of course, like you know, movie ones specific. You know, uh, fan base ones. Yeah. Like everybody has a fan base. I mean, anything you could ever think of, there's a podcast about it. That's really cool, actually. Do you think it's actually a smart strategy to niche in something that maybe no one else or very few other people are doing? Well, so I'll tell you, that's where you get sponsorship faster. Really? So, yeah. So, you, uh, in general, if I were to say I want a sponsor for my podcast and I had a very general podcast, again, this is very general. General rules are in the first 30 days per episode, you want about 5,000 downloads because you're going to they're going to pay on a per thousand, basically. Okay. So that's a number. If a general company were to say, I like your podcast, your business, whatever, that's that's what they're gonna look at. And that, again, you're shopping the big boys at that point or big girls. If you are more niched, those, those sponsors know that they don't need those kind of numbers because mm. the audience really likes you and they know that even if you get 200 or 300 downloads per episode, those are 300 people that they want to get in front of. Interesting. And you repeat that, you know, the trucking one I told you about, yeah. he didn't even publish episodes and he had, got, and he had people writing him checks. Wow. Because they knew if A, he had a good reputation in the industry and B, they knew that this podcast, even if, again, he got out the door with 50 downloads, those were 50 people. And Imagine sitting in front of a room of a couple hundred people or 50 people who were your exact audience. You do that all day. Yeah, that's so, true. So the more niched you are, you can get you can get sponsors a lot faster because they know, all right, I know who your audience is going to be and I'm down with that. I want to be part of this or I want my name on it. And again, you can get around. That's a kind of a commercial type base. Like I'm going to plot 
pop in a commercial on yours. Now you can have them sponsor and get more creative, like let's do a show with you or let's do other things to you know, get outside that box. But um, yeah, the more niched you are, the, ma- the faster you can move in a, in a um, sponsor direction. I didn't even think about that aspect, but it makes sense because yeah. if you're advertising, let's say you're doing a TV commercial, it's yeah. just kind of like the shotgun of throw, exactly. it, throw it to the wall and see what sticks. Because anybody could be watching. Exactly. But a niche, you know, I mean, who's going to be listening to a trucker podcast? Exactly. Only truckers. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Like, you're not probably, yeah, there's not a lot of people are like, hmm, let me just, yeah. Yeah. So then you you know. You know that demographic. Right. So, I mean, I could see where uh, Joe Rogan, I guess, it could be a a very wide variance of people. And some of them could be business owners, but some of them could, you know, could be just, you know, teenager at home. It could be literally anyone out there. Yeah. So I could see where that would be more effective for advertising. And it's interesting if you listen to a lot of the advertising, you can tell it's still a new a new frontier because. Mm. A lot of a lot of companies are trying to figure out how to get that ROI out of it, and if you listen to a lot of the podcast, it's the same advertisers. Across, you know what I mean? Like they they've got it, they get it, they're they're in it, but it's a lot of the same companies going across various podcasts because they know you know how this works. But a lot of them are very hesitant to have a friend who works and she she is that person who matches podcasts to sponsorship sponsors mm. and a lot of them are you know they're hesitant to get in because they're like well how do i find my, you know get my roi out of this and how do i do this because it's still a newer territory yeah that makes sense yeah it's it's a relatively new thing yeah even though it's certainly gaining popularity and exactly. I, i'm sure a lot of that's because of the the joe rogan and you know all, especially yeah. all the controversy that's surrounded oh, that God. lately yeah <laughs> i'm sure podcasting has yeah. spiked in popularity yeah. since that happened yeah so it's it's definitely getting more and more popular i would say exponentially now yes yeah it's not such a foreign, like, what? How do I download a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're now, if you look at the stats, like when I first started podcasting like seven years ago, it was like 30 to 40% of American households knew what a podcast was. Now, I think we're approaching the 80% mark. I think it's around there. So we're still not quite at 100%. Yeah. But it's definitely not as foreign as it was. Right. Like, where I would have to go with people, okay, let's let's look at your app. Let me download po- <laughs> Apple Podcasts, right? Like, let's get this. And now you've got, like, the players like Spotify who are really, mm-hmm. they, are, they are making an audio play. They want to be that place that people go for all things audio. So, uh, you know, definitely more people are, are going for it. So is th- that's the other thing is platforms. Is there different platforms that people should consider being on, not being on? How do you decide where you want to be? Yeah, I think what you should do is go for the big ones. Apple, Google, um, Spotify, obviously. Stitcher used to be, It's I don't know if it's as big. It used to be um, more for the Android users. Um, there's another one I miss. Oh, Amazon. Amazon Music is another one. You know, you want to get your stuff over there. Pandora. Pandora usually takes a little bit longer. They're usually a couple months or so to get on. So you want to make sure you're on those. A lot of times then what ends up happening is they'll pull like an API from Apple Podcasts or something. And so you get on, on other oh, distribution channels. So you'll hmm. find your podcast on places like Castro, for example, or other feeders because that's what they do is and it's just automatic yes yeah so you always want to make sure you're on there i mean i'm going to be honest with you i've never seen knock on wood just uh where kind of an off the wall podcast channel all of a sudden somebody's like whoa all of a sudden i'm getting thousands of downloads on this podcast channel Mm -hmm. like you definitely want to make a play where you can get on as many i have like a master list that i've found and i want to say it's 70 or 80 podcast channels and again maybe you're getting like one or two here you know what i mean it's not major but you want to make sure you're on those top five for sure okay that's good to know yeah well so how could people find you if they are interested in talking to you about potentially doing a podcast yeah absolutely so innovation media enterprises is our our website so you can easily find there and go and i will say this what's interesting is we do have a studio but majority of our clients are remote <laughs> oh interesting so yeah so we help people all over the world with podcasts so if you have help uh, you know anywhere from the strategy to like i said growth because that's a really big thing too a lot of people start it and then they're not really utilizing 
the growth factor in the way mm. that they should. So I always use it as if a tree falls in the woods, nobody's there to hear it. Did it really fall? It's kind of like with podcasting. If you make a podcast, but nobody's there to ever listen to it, what's the point of creating it? So you really need to make sure you're continually pushing it out and, and marketing it the way Now, you do should. you help people that already have a podcast, but you just want to grow it and yes. want some strategies? Yes, we can okay. help with that strategy. We can help with marketing materials. I'll say like just little things, like if you have the video, if you have a video of yourself, use those instead of an audiogram, uh, just because it does get shared more. It does get what, you know, it does do perform much better on social media. Just little things like that. Make sure you're giving your guests a lot of material I can see a massive difference and just you know in the pot in my podcast or the podcast we produce when a guest does share it, it makes a huge difference yes. so but make it easy on them just right. little things like that uh, really do go a long way and okay. don't let a podcast die mm -hmm. like just because you recorded it um you know three months ago four months ago it still could be very relevant and I always share the story her name is Stacy Harris she and I did a podcast on networking years ago years ago and every once in a while on Twitter, that thing still comes up like, hey, here's some great networking tips from Aaron. And every single time I hit retweet and share it and she just has it in a backlog and it wow. just constantly turns, but it's still relevant. I mean, still about networking and it still gets gets play and nice. she, just, she never let it die, which is really, it's a, That's smart. It's a, really, it's a very smart strategy. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I need to I need to lock that away. <laughs> yes. All right. So innovation media enterprises dot com dot com. That's yes. how people can find you. Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you and so much for having me. And like I said, I'm oh, I'm very excited to have you over various reasons, not just to be in your podcast, but thank you for having me on your podcast. <laughs> well, and I'm looking forward to seeing the video when it gets done. Yes. I feel like we're we're next level now. <laughs> And thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Lindsay Klein with Sakline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. You can find us at sakline.com, S-A-K-L-I-N-E.com, or you can email me at info at sakline.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us, everyone. By the Books is presented by Sakline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. For more information on Sakline services or to get a hold of Lindsay, visit sakline.com or email info at sakline.com. The information provided on this website and podcast does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available are for general information purposes only. Information provided by Sakline may not constitute the most up-to-date legal or other information. Listeners should contact their attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter and should refrain from acting on the basis of this information without first seeking legal advice from counsel in the relevant jurisdiction. Only your individual attorney can provide assurances that the information contained herein and your interpretation of it is applicable or appropriate to your particular situation.